What is social exclusion and why does it impact older adults so severely? Today we will shed light on these questions and their groundbreaking project tackling this issue. What are the five key domains of social exclusion? We will reveal insights from a comparative analysis of EU countries and Norway, discover how different regions address this challenge and the lessons we can learn. We'll also discuss potential policy measures to reduce social exclusion and the key takeaways for you. Join us for an inspiring conversation on research in the spotlight where we bring understanding and action to aging issues. Don't miss it. What is social exclusion and why is it particularly problematic for older adults? Social exclusion is a separation of individuals or groups from the mainstream society. Over the life course, we are all excluded at a certain point from an institution or a group, but this is not what social exclusion is. Uh, social exclusion is a systematic process where people lack or are denied access to uh, resources, uh, rights, goods and services, and they have the inability to participate in the normal relationships and activities that are available to the majority of the people in their society. So this is particularly problematic for older adults because uh, the associated problems that they have with age, which means poor health, uh, loss of relatives of, and friends, lower level of uh, physical and uh, social activities. So this is unwanted uh, in its own right, but it also uh, has a toll for um, uh, health systems and uh, pension systems and so on. So. What unique contributions does your project introduce? Um, our project contributed to a better and more comprehensive understanding of social exclusion in European countries with a focus on Romania and Norway. We looked at uh, levels and patterns of social exclusion in various countries. We also tried to understand what are the outcomes of social exclusion because it can determine um, a, a poor mental health in older age or increased mortality even. And uh, also we try to understand which are the risk groups of, uh, to social exclusion because, for example, we know women are more exposed to exclusion since they uh, have higher life expectancy, so they live longer and there is a high probability they will um, uh, live a part of their life, uh, life uh, alone and uh, so they lose some of the relatives and friends and the partner, but uh, men also have, might have some uh, particular risks uh, to exclusion. Also urbanity or uh, uh, health status might be risk factors. Um, we also concentrated on drivers and mechanisms of uh, exclusion because we wanted to understand what is actually the lived experience of exclusion. What events during the lifetime of people will determine in the long term this situation uh, of being separated from the mainstream society. And we also looked at implications for policy with, with the objective to, uh, set, uh, to, to design a, a, a set of policy measures that would contribute to the inclusion of uh, older vulnerable groups. And uh, then um, the final uh, contribution was an increased research capacity here at the University of Bucharest. Can you explain the five domains of social exclusion used in this project's conceptual framework? Yes, so at the core of social exclusion is poverty, where people are not able to fulfill their basic needs and so they don't have the opportunities to live their lives according to their goals um, and the values that they um, should share in their respective society. Then there is exclusion from uh, social relations where people can become socially isolated and uh, they don't have access to networks of uh, relatives, friends or neighbors or the quality of these relations is low so they don't get the support they need in their older age. Then we have a third type of exclusion which is um, exclusion from neighborhood and community 
Uh, this happens when people live in deprived neighborhoods, they don't offer friendly spaces, they don't encourage social participation, they don't have access to services and so on. Fourth type of or dimension of exclusion is exclusion from civic participation which uh, involves uh, various forms of uh, involvement from volunteering, political participation, engagement in social movements, uh, helping others in informal ways. And this is especially important for older people who are um, at risk of social exclusion because they don't necessarily have the resources to volunteer, but they rather participate in smaller community and help uh, each other. And finally, there is exclusion from services where um, older pe adults don't have access to health care, uh, long-term care if they need it, um, transportation, uh, information and communication technologies, and we know this is uh, problematic for older people, um, or area-based services. What insights have you gained from the comparative analysis between different European Union countries and Norway regarding social exclusion among older adults? There are various types of exclusion, some of them being uh, quite severe and with um, serious consequences. Um, one such type is multidimensional social exclusion where people, uh, for example, suffer from low level of material resources, they cannot satisfy their basic needs, they are disconnected from meaningful relations, they have low access to services, low feelings of societal inclusion and so on. Um, around uh, one-fourth of older adults suffer from uh, this type of exclusion in Balkan countries, for example, and Romania is included here. Um, what we see is that uh, low education and poor health are universal risk factors for all types of social exclusion. But there are other factors, for example, being a man, which make um, this gender more um, prone to uh, exclusion from material resources and social relations at the same time. And uh, this has to do probably with um, uh, types of different types of sociability between uh, genders because uh, women tend to have more um, expanded research networks and um, men uh, tend to have uh, smaller research networks that are connected to their job usually and so when they retire they uh, lose their ty this type of connections. They also in the Balkan countries um, have um, a traditional role of breadwinner and when this role cannot be fulfilled, then they are at risk of uh, being excluded from both uh, material resources and social connections. So um, there are different risk groups of, um, in, in regard to different types of social exclusion. Norway is a special case because um, we know it's a very affluent country and also um, has a very comprehensive and uh, um, um, a developed welfare state where people are very well socially protected. Um, in this country, around 8% of older adults are at risk of exclusion, but not in material aspects, rather in social dimensions of, excluded, of exclusion, where, for example, they are more social, uh, socially isolated and they feel lonely or they are excluded from information and communication technologies. Even though they get the, the, the appropriate support, um, there is still um, effect, an effect on mental health. Even in more affluent countries, we see this um, um, negative effect that social exclusion has on um, uh, mental health and uh, even mortality. And uh, there is also something interesting because, um, for example, exclusion is associated with uh, higher mortality in men than in women. 
um, this might have to do with the way that um, men express themselves, that um, they um, only admit to loneliness when it's very severe, and when it's severe, it will also increase mortality, in any case, more than in women. Working with a diverse team and collaborating internationally with esteemed institutions like NOVA and National Scientific Research Institute of Labor and Social Protection, what advantages or benefits does this partnership bring to your project and team? Our consortium was made from three institutions, the Research Institute of the University of Bucharest, uh, Norwegian Social Research, NOVA, and um, the National Scientific Research for Labor and Social Protection, and the collaboration went particularly well with uh, different uh, tasks and also working together on joint publications and many research activities. Uh, through this collaboration, we um, got a better access to new research networks. In fact, after the uh, closing of this project, we have a spin-off with a new project uh, funded through Hor Horizon Europe and a project for a book on loneliness in European countries. Um, our project also contributed to um, in, uh, better research infrastructure in Romania since we collected data with biographical interviews and the include, we included in our um, field survey all the Roma, which is an um, overlooked category in, in uh, social research. Uh, there was also uh, another component having to do with training, which is very important for a research team. We are now better in terms of um, um, competencies uh, in regard to data analysis. And uh, there is a continued cooperation among the members of the team and increased uh, networking with uh, European stakeholders and Romanian stakeholders. What potential policy measures could be implemented to reduce social exclusion among older adults based on your findings? There are three types of uh, or levels of intervention that can be um, used to reduce social exclusion. Um, first level uh, interventions are those that aim to prevent uh, social exclusion from uh, happening uh, in the first place. And uh, here it's clear that increasing in social spending, especially in fields of health and education, is very important uh, given our findings. Then there are um, second level interventions that concentrate on um, risk groups. For example, we found that younger older men, 50 to 65, which are not active on the labor market, are a special risk of social exclusion. So in this case, um, interventions will try to um, help these men to um, better integrate on the labor market or uh, tailor the, the um, uh, jobs to their needs because they have special uh, issues in older age, for example, lower mobility, and they will need a special workplace that should adapt to these needs. And third, there are uh, interventions that try to minimize uh, social exclusion when it happens, to minimize the effects in terms of uh, mental health, for example, or physical health, and we have um, learned a lot from Norway. Uh, we looked at best practices that are applied in this country, and we assessed whether they can be transferable to Romania, and we uh, found a series of, of, of measures that could actually help um, in our country too. For example, uh, Men in Health is a program that concentrates on uh, bringing more men into healthcare, and this would uh, mean that uh, they will be um, especially targeted and recruited to the field, and it would also um, have some um, challenges in terms of gender stereotyping, for, for example, but in the longer term it would really mean um, a, a gain for uh, labor market and for services at the same time. 
Uh, there are also other programs like the pink buses that are used in Norway, uh, which um, uh, help older people to get access to proper transportation um, when they don't have access to public transportation, for example. And these pink buses are very loved in their communities. They also um, increase their vis the visibility of older people in their localities and help them um, uh, fulfill their needs in terms of, of mobility. And in the end, for our listeners, what ideas would you like them to pick up on about your project? Social exclusion is a serious problem in societies and um, it can have serious consequences. It can be detrimental for the legitimacy of governments when combined with low trust can be a breeding ground for extremism, radicalization, conspiracy theories and so on. So this is why it's very important that we address this uh, problem and uh, we, we, it it can be done with a life course approach that looks also at other um, um, categories, age categories, not only at older adults, because we need to implement measures uh, during the lifetime of older generations, but also to look back at newer generations, at children and middle-aged adults, at their experiences. So we need to design uh, measures for all these uh, groups. And this can be done uh, only through intergenerational so solidarity. Thank you for watching Research in the Spotlight, a podcast for scientists and passionate science people made under the Norway Grants Research Program by the Executive Agency for Higher Education, Research Development and Innovation Funding as Program Operator. Until the next time, like and share this episode if you think science is a key to a better future.